So listen, Mary, we are talking all about books today. We're talking about how to relaunch your book the right way. Because what I've realized, Mary, is that there's, there's kind of like three classes of people. There's non-authors, which we love those people. There's authors who are in process. And then there's this other group of people that are authors, but they have a book and they know that it didn't go well the first time, meaning like their launch or they could have done things differently. Let's talk about yours. First of all, I'd love for you to hold up your first version of your book because we're going to talk about this here in a moment, what happened afterwards. But let's let's show that. So that's your first book, God first Me book. in My Hula Hoop. And again, nothing wrong with it, but when did that release? What year? It was in 2015, I want to say. I'm going okay. back remembering, or 13. Okay. I need to look at my book. Look, look at it. While you're doing that, we've got Joe from Germany. We have Leah from Texas. We have some great people. Look, we're so excited for you guys to be here. If, if yeah. you know somebody who needs to be on this today, we're going to give practical, tactical steps about how to relaunch your book the right way. What was the year, Mary? 2013. 2013. So the quick the story. Is, yeah. Yeah. The quick story is we met in 2011 at, mm -hmm. a, at an event. And you were, I could tell you had book all over you, author all over you. You kind of brought me in at the tail end of your first book's journey. Yes. Yes. Because I, I realized I, di I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so like, I need to go to somebody who knows what, who knows, who, who can help lead me that down okay. the right path. Yeah. I gotcha. And that your, your, your friend Carla's saying, hey, so you got big fans. Yeah. So. You brought me in. You had already chosen your title. You had already chosen your cover. The book was pretty much done, but you kind of brought me in to talk about, hey, you know, your back cover, um, mm -hmm. getting the book, you know, rolling and stuff like that. You had another publisher, mm -hmm. and we won't mention any names, but that book, how did it go the, the first time you did that first book? You know, I would say for the first one, it went okay. Going into it not knowing what I was doing, and I was just – going off uh, with a publisher that I had, what they were suggesting to me, and it did all right. I wouldn't say great or anything, but but for my first one, it, it was okay. It was all right. Okay. Fantastic. So it went okay, and then mm -hmm. I get this phone call in, I don't know, 2014, 2015. I don't know what it was, but yeah. I know I, you were panicked, and in a good way. I mean, I get it. Like Books to me are like, it's not your kid, but it's like a kid. Mm -hmm. Take your baby. You um, spend enough time with it. Spend enough time. It's your blood, sweat, and tears. You want to see it succeed. So you had this um, frantic call where you called me, and, and what was the story? I, I called you up. I'll never forget because I got an email from the publisher letting me know that they were going out of business. Wow. I was like, oh, my gosh, what does that mean? Uh, like you spend all this time – like. I'm writing this book and you get it out there and then the publisher says they're, they're going away. Wow. And when the publisher went away, my book went away because the publisher owned the ISBN number to the book. Wow. So that means everything I spent in writing this first book was gone in one email. And that's when I called Chip. I'm like, Carrie, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Right. Uh, and, and you, I mean, you, you really came in and you helped save me from, from thinking I, there's nothing I could do to showing me what I could do. Yeah. And so if we're talking like your book is your kid in a way, it's kind of like you get the phone call, your kid died or your kid's held hostage. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what it was. Your kid's, your kid's held hostage. Um, I don't even think at that point, Mary, you thought, let's retitle this. Let's retitle No, this. no. Yeah, yeah, just, well, you know, yeah, well, you get tied into that title. I mean, this was your first book, and it was my first book, and I'm like, uh, I, I love the title. I thought it was great, of course. Uh, my mom did the design cover for it, and uh, yeah, well, why would I want to retitle it? Yeah. It was great. Well, and, and so I get it because I've been close to my books before and you become, it becomes part of you and it's tough to, and by the way, people, you know, Erica's sharing your website, which is fantastic. Um, MaryReesburg.com. Fantastic. Um, but you get to this point where 
maybe in the beginning you don't want to take criticism. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not saying you, but I'm saying as most authors watching this, by the way, I'd love to hear how many authors have already written their book, how many people are in process, that type of thing. Go ahead, type in. But the first thing I said to you was like, are you willing to relaunch this differently? And, and hold up that first book again. All right, now we're going to do book two. And, I, and hold it real high because... Um, Can you see I, it in here? Yeah, I'm going to... There you go. Book two. There you go. So we, call, we, we titled the book totally different. We titled it Center Ring. And read the subtitle on each of them, if you don't mind. Uh, no, this one is Finding Balance in Your... Balance and Momentum in Your Walk with Christ. Got me my hula hoop. And this one is Center Ring, Seven Steps to balance the momentum in your relationship with Christ. Excellent. So we went, we went center ring versus God, me and my hula hoop. Yes. And we went seven steps versus mm -hmm. finding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now yes. that might seem subtle folks. Like, you know, what's the big deal? But yeah, the cover is totally different. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, honored that your mom did the first design, but, with, with, but I get it. I get it. Look, I've done, I mean, I'll, I should hold up my first book around here. You know, I'm not pleased with it, but you got to start somewhere. Here it is. So my first book, I mean, what is that? I don't even know. The Journey Toward Relevance. I don't even know. But this was a traditional publisher. They, they made me pick this. So when you, pub when you publish traditionally, they just hand it to you. So they said, hey, we're going to put a church in the background of a, I don't know, a skyscraper. You know, I don't even know what that means, but, but the point is this, like that, let's talk about the, the, the publishing after the second book, how, how did the new title, the new subtitle, the new look feel, uh, what did it do? Well, it's like letting go of something that you've clinged to for a, a long time because you've toiled and sweat over this one. But when you see uh, maybe the, the rebirth of what it can be and you get something like this coming your way, which I love this cover. Mm -hmm. I love the colors of it. I love the motion of it. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I love it. Uh, and then the, the seven steps is, is very appealing to some people who, who like the simplistic seven right. steps versus the ambiguous finding. Yeah. And this book just the cover alone, the, and I, and I remember you saying to me, Mary, you know, there's with a title like this, with retitling it, there's a series here. Mm. And it, I didn't see it until just recently, but yes, there is a series here because the title allows me to do whatever I want to with it. And it can be centering different subtitle, yep. but it's in a series of books, which I think I, I didn't think at the time, but now fantastic fantastic I love, I love it yeah look and you got people jumping in i want to have a fabulous launch my first book in process i live in a small city of two hundred thousand largest in the region my question is how to increase my sphere of my launch so this is cool we'll get into some of those questions from leah but mary let's let's talk about the fact that um your first launch maybe you just kind of leaked it out to the world you didn't have big launch day you didn't have fanfare you didn't create an event around it, true? True, very true. It's like, okay. here it is, go find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you know that when I help a client, because you were a private client, um, mm -hmm. when you reached out to me the first time, I didn't have an author program. I didn't have you know, author training. I just was a published author who had done a bunch of books, and I kind of advised you at the end of that process. But when you found me in 2014, 2015, we had a whole publishing company. We had a whole thing rocking and rolling. But, but what we specifically have now, and I'm going to ask Erica, Erica to share this, my heart is to help authors launch right. Because I know that if you launch your book right, it's just like a movie, Mary. You know, A Wrinkle in Time came out this last week, and a few weeks before that, Black Panther. You know, before that, Wonder Woman. I mean, you just go on and on and on. If a movie does not go well in opening weekend, it's a world of hurt. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they judge the success besides the Shawshank Redemption, which kind of was mild at the the, the, uh, movie theater. Cable TV resurrected. If your movie tanks or doesn't get much response the first weekend, you're in trouble. And when authors launch their books or like you relaunch their books, what we did is we put an entire marketing strategy around that, including... I love Leah's question. What if I live in a small town? You did your launch on Facebook Live the entire day. Talk, talk, was, talk a little bit about that. Because I was it watching. It was so much fun. Yeah. It was so much fun. So beforehand, I, I had set up these different locations that I could go through throughout the day, do a book signing. Uh, part of my book is involves hula hooping. So I w- went to these locations and I brought my book. I set it up, had a book signing, did hula hooping for people. Uh, and it all stor- started in the morning at a coffee shop, a local coffee shop uh, in, in town where we live. And But it was all done Facebook Live. So the whole thing was all day long, Facebook Live. Mary's at the coffee shop. Go join her for the, for the book signing and Facebook Live there. Uh, Chick-fil-A for lunch. I went to there and they set me off a little table uh, so people could could come and do and you know, see me there. And all, but all day long was just advertising. Mary's now where, where's she going to be? She's going to Chick-fil-A on Nama Road for her next book signing. And then at the end of the day, ended it at a location where we kind of had a big party. And I actually had a sponsor come in and provide food and beverages for the evening. And at the end of the night, we're all hula hooping in the parking lot. <laughs> but the whole day was the whole day was an event it was like yeah. a day long party and that's what we've realized I tell authors all the time that you cannot slow bake a release you need a pivotal spike you need an event and you don't need a big town to do this um, you, I was watching like I said from Ohio I saw other people in the tribe watching from all over the place we felt like we were part of your global launch even though we were not physically there. And I know for a fact that it it bumped your book sales, like people Mm -hmm. found out about it. And we're going to share Mary's website again, um, maryreesberg.com. But what have you been able to do? Like, so you've been able to take your book, you you speak as well. You're a speaker, you're a coach, you do Mm -hmm. all that. So uh, I have been able to do that so, uh, with the, the speaking. I've been able to go to different uh, television agencies, you know, I would say stations, uh, go on different shows uh, like on TVN, been there. So it's just a matter of finding some of the connections. Uh, but then locally, even just because of social media, with the, the Bible study, like a virtual Bible study, did some pilot testing on that. Uh, if they go to my website, uh, at maryreesberg.com. There'll be a pop-up because I'm going to do another one starting in April Sweet. where we go through the book and, and we learn how to hula hoop uh, at the same time. But but it's just all these different avenues that have have broadened out my perspective and my thinking of, I could take this book all over the world right from Florida where I live mm-hmm. because of what we're doing right now. And uh-huh. I mean, there, there is no spot that it could not potentially get to. And I, and know I, you, I love that. Yeah, and, and if I remember correctly, you you got tied into some other hula hoop things around. Oh hula my hoop. goodness. Yeah, oh, so, right? Yes, over in India, in um, Marrakesh, I wanna say, I wanna make say, or I think that's the right, right island over there. Just, I mean, Brazil, places all over the world that I would never have ever thought I could even get into it. And, and again, I, I, where I live is maybe 600,000 people. So it's not a big metropolis or, or a big place to be, but I, I'm touching people all over the world with this. Uh, in Africa, uh, a gentleman had the book over there and actually took a photo of it and, and posted. He's, he's sitting at his home uh, in Africa re, you know, with a book. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. England, I mean, just all sorts of places. I love it. People might have jumped on late. Once again, hold up book one and book two, because I think right. that's, that, that's important. The so book, book one, God, me and my hula hoop. And book two. Book two, center ring. And we changed it from finding balance and momentum to seven steps. We call that a framework. And folks, you really got to listen up, whether you're a nonfiction author, a fiction author, 
I have my fiction book over here, and I even did this with the fiction book, turned it into a framework. But a framework is simple steps that, uh, it's a solution broken down into simple steps. So Mary's solution is finding balance and momentum, and she's, she's a Christian, so it's in your relationship with Christ. You can do this with business, with health, but a framework, people want a problem solved. And Mary, I love this, we'll have to share this quickly, but you talked about when you when you disciplined your kids as, uh, you know, when they were younger, you would have them go into the hula hoop mm -hmm. as what? Their, their quiet space, explain that story. Yeah, just briefly, that was their time out spot because the chair didn't work, the corner didn't work. And so I, I've always loved a hula hoop. I had them in the house and I'm like, just go sit in your hula hoop space. And, and, and from there, you would see them just like starting to move from where they had been, maybe where I needed to discipline them yeah. to a spot where like, oh, look what I can do in my hula hoop space. But they got the concept of this is what I get right here. This is what I get to control is within this space. But within this space is not only my children, but also Christ is in the center of everything. Yeah. And folks, you know who oh, keep going. Oh, no, that's that's good. Okay. So I can talk a long time. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. I, and I want to answer questions, folks. If, if you have any questions, if you know an author who has launched their book, maybe it didn't go the best, but they have this asset that is amazing, global impact, as Mary just shared. But what's really important, folks, is that Mary branded it as a hula hoop in the beginning. And, and I think I told you, Mary, because again, when you invite me to be real and honest, then I'm like, cool, we don't have to worry about pretense, feelings, like I can just advise you. And same thing, you know, I've had people laying to me as well. So I call it truth telling. But in the beginning, I said, you know, if people find your book on Amazon, they don't know if this book is about hula hoop instruction. You know, mm -hmm. like your first title, your first title, yes. God yes. meets my this hula hoop. Yeah. And yeah. there's there's a hula hoop on the front. What happens if you don't like hula hoops? What happens if you're non, you know, you don't care either way? Um, but we led with an entire different branding called Center Ring, Seven Steps to Finding Your Balance and Momentum in a Relationship with Christ. What did the title do? Do you think it attracted a new crowd? Do you think people... Ab absolutely. Because, and you, you hit it right on when you said the hula hoop hoop word in itself if people like what's that about it yeah. does it didn't say much and then if they like a hula hoop what uh, yeah. and I, I remember getting feedback from one person saying I don't even know what a hula hoop has to do with it like mm -hmm. why I'm like well because you know <laughs> which yeah. kind of hit me like well you don't get it but that was one of the problems is I wasn't making it clear That's so right. the clarity wasn't there and then with center ring I think it piques the interest and yeah. it, it opens it up for everybody yeah. to, to want to look at it yeah. and, and it helped with the clarity. Awesome. And I, t I tell people all the time, clarity attracts and confusion repels. And when people are, people buy on title, subtitle, cover, back cover, you know, those four things are very important. And then a fifth thing would be table of contents. Those five things are so important for the book buyer. But then what we were able to do, Mary, is we were able to spike it with an event. You were able to surround it with a good marketing plan. You were able to create follow-up products. You know, I know you've spoken where you've mm -hmm. woven in the book before, you mentioned on TV. So that is a powerful launch and that's my heart. And, and tomorrow we have, you know, whether you're watching this days from now, who knows, but, but at least right now, we have a free live training tomorrow with a free ebook. There's nothing to sell on the webinar. There's, you can't buy something at the end with a credit card. If you really love it, you can kind of say, hey, I want more information. But it's not a hard sell. It's not a, it's not a hard pitch. The point is this. It's, it's to help authors either launch their book right the first time or relaunch it better second time what would you say to someone mary who either knows someone or they themselves say you know but that sounds like a lot of work and and uh how much work was it really to relaunch it once the book was already done you know i, 
I would say it would be a fair amount of work, but it was necessary work. So I wouldn't want to tell anybody, oh, I just transferred it over because I didn't. I, I wouldn't be improving on it. And kind of what I say was, was one of those little uh, golden treasures in all of this is that because I needed to relaunch it, I could make it better because I knew more the second time around. And even with that, uh, I just uh, opened up the Kindle version of it, and that should be on Amazon in the next day or so of the book. And had I not relaunched it and, and kind of tweaked the layout and what it looked like and the flow of the book, I, I would say people, if they converted to the Kindle version, it would not flow nearly as well. Just looking at it, I was looking at it last night, it made a huge difference. The layout was and you're so much better in the second book. You're totally reminding me of something, Mary. Um, I don't think I've ever told anyone this before. You're making me confess my sins. Um, the, <laughs> no, the journey toward relevance and the fine line. The fine line is a relaunch. You know, I don't know if I have it. Or, oh, here it is. Hang on one second. So look at you, Mary, teaching me today. There but we go. This book... <laughs> right, which I wasn't happy with, is this book, The Fine Line. You look on Amazon, and this one has 106, you know, reviews or something like that. I don't know. But I'm with you, Mary. So there's a couple ways to relaunch. Let's talk about this. One way to relaunch it is just, just basically say, hey, and, and one of my clients is doing this. Her name's Soma Ray. She launched it quietly and not that good. She felt the first time. The way she's going to relaunch it is same book, same ISBN, another version. So, so, so she'll go audio or she'll go hardcover, but she mm -hmm. will essentially say, this is my global release. So even slapping on the title called, you know what? Hey, Mary, I thought your book came out last fall. Well, you know what? This is the global release. You know, and we're going to have a live yeah. stream. I mean, you you don't need so level one is call it global release. Maybe add another version. Level one. Level two is like you're saying, new title, new cover, new ISBN improvement. Mm -hmm. How important do you think that was for you versus just the first one? Oh, I I didn't launch it well. Let's call it a global release. What did that? What? Did, why do you think yours needed all that other stuff? Uh, it need, just needed to be better. Uh, not having the framework, you mentioned framework earlier. I, I didn't have the framework. I thought I had the framework, but I didn't have it as well as I have it in you know, center ring right now. The framework in, in this book is, is spot on to awesome. me and, and it can still be improved upon in the, in the next one. But with the, the re-release of it, I was also able to add fresh content. I was able to include stories from my children in this one that had happened over the last couple of years in between the launches. Uh, it, it, it just warms my heart. The second one, the second one is where it's going. That's, that's, that's it. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. And look, it takes maturity to, to do that. Um, yeah. I, right. I remember reading the letter from one of your daughters, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, mm -hmm. The letter in there. And uh, that was heartfelt. I mean, it was an amazing story, but I think it takes maturity. Some people are so tied to their first version that it's almost like, well, to change it is to admit failure or to admit, you know, it wasn't right the first time. And like you, I knew it. The first time it came out, I was like, eh, you know, so I re-released it as a different book. Um, I'm re-releasing three other books this year because I just believe in the power of the re-release. You see this all the time with movies. The Shawshank Redemption came out with the 10th year anniversary where they added extra features, director's cut, boom, boom, boom. So I love this. Uh, Mary, is there anything that you would say to the person right now who's nervous? They're saying, oh my gosh, I wasn't planning on hearing this today. I, I love what Mary said. It, it worked for her good. What would you say about someone who might, you know, be on the edge and say, I think I want to listen to Carrie's webinar tomorrow. Does he really know what he's talking about? Talk a little bit about um, that. Yeah. One, uh, listen to the webinar tomorrow. Absolutely. Or get, I, I don't know if you have to reserve a seat for it or a spot and then yeah. you can listen to it as, as you can, but definitely 
hear what Carrie has to say tomorrow. Uh, Carrie's words of wisdom, I mean, that's how it transformed everything from what it was to something, you know, I would say it went from, that was all right to me. This is good. Mm. The second release feels good. Awesome. Um, the content is good. And from good, it's just going to get better. Uh, so don't be afraid to re-release what you have, to change what you have. But I will say, find the guidance to mm. make sure that you're going to do it the right way. Yeah. The second one is going to be better and you just want to make sure it's better. And that's why you need to listen to Carrie tomorrow on his webinar. Well, look, I'm glad that you, you did it because I know that your impact is growing, your influence is growing and even your income uh, mm -hmm. it's to see you come alive. And I'm excited about this series. We talked about that yesterday for the first yeah. time. Yeah, there's this new <laughs> series called Center Ring with another subtitle and maybe even another one after that. So what you're doing is you're essentially building a brand and let's yeah. face it, you know, let's face it. Has Coca-Cola ever changed their brand? Yes. Right. I mean, meaning like the cans or the other than the polar bear. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or Coke is it or the real thing like brands need to evolve. And so you as the author don't think, well, I just can't do that. You actually can. And I would say that if you don't, um, you might be sitting on a gold mine that, like Mary, just needed a little bit of work, a little bit of tweaks. Well, if Mary, I could add one, one more yeah. thing, really yeah. quick, uh, that this also transferred over because the brand has started to develop and now has transferred over to other speaking engagements that don't have anything to do with the book. I love it. But the brand is there. And so the attention of, well, who's this lady hula hooping while she's speaking? Yeah. The brand has developed outside of the book, which has increased everything. I love it. Because let's face it, your book is a reflection of you. And mm -hmm. if you're not happy with your launch the way it went the first time, don't just sit there in that chronic pain. Like, you know, you can live a life of chronic pain or you can embrace the acute pain and, and, and make it better. So, Mary, thank you so much. Uh, MaryReesberg.com. And whether you're a brand new author about to launch, do it right the first time. I'll show you how to do that on the webinar tomorrow. As well as the free ebook. And then if you have a book out, consider relaunching it. Like we talked about, Mary, you helped me today. So, two versions of the relaunch. One is a simple relaunch, meaning call it global, tie some marketing and events around it. And then the second one is actually facelift, new cover, new ISBN. But there are more publishing companies, let's face it, Mary, I, I told you one yesterday, that have gone under. And I, and I feel so bad because these authors, their ISBNs are frozen, their design files are frozen. That might be their life's work and they're stuck. And, and it hurts to be there. So I would go right along with you and, and deal with that pain or rip that bandaid off, whatever you need to do to get over it and, and, and find out what's better because it is better. I'm just telling you, it is better. Awesome. Well, Mary, Keep, uh, I call it igniting souls. Keep helping people, you know, find balance and momentum. And we love what you're doing. And, and thank you for being gracious enough to share your story today. Hey, thank you for having me on your live broadcast. Thank you so much. And, and everybody, thank you. We'll see you guys.